What is up, Ravens Flop? Huge shout out for your support for the 410 Sports Talk. Chance and Glenn are the best in the business. They're killing it right now. They love talking Raven talk. Make sure you go subscribe to their channel. Let's go, Ravens. Big trust. Welcome in, everyone, to another episode of 410 Sports Talk. I'm Glenn Martin here with my co-host, James Haskell. In this episode, we're going to discuss a uh, familiar face returning back home to the flock. Um, but before we get into it, click the subscribe button, hit the notification bell, and we will keep you up to date on all your Ravens news. So, Jimmy, let everyone know why we're here. That's right, ladies ladies and gentlemen. The previous uh, previous linebackers coach for the Jacksonville Jaguars and previous to that member of the coaching staff here in Baltimore and previous to that tackling machine and inside linebacker for the Baltimore Ravens. Now coach Zachary Orr is back on the coaching staff. Kind of fun because of course Mike McDonald comes back. Uh, Zach Orr comes back. I think it's going to be exciting things for the defense. I liked Zach as a player. I think he's one of those players that he reminds me of uh, this is a kind of a a goofy comparison when he played, he was like a more athletic Josh Bynes in that, like he always found himself at the right time, the right time at the right place, at the right time. Mm -hmm. He had Velcro's Velcro on his hands. Once he got a hold of you, he didn't, you know, he didn't let you go um, tackle with great form, uh, got everything he could out of his game. And uh, I think it's been exciting to see his coaching path so far. So Zach Orr is coming back home to Baltimore. I think it's a welcome return. And of course, Glenn, I think we should, we should also let everyone know who he's replacing. Um, because I think that's also news. Yeah, Rob Ryan is out as the current linebacker coach. Just one season here with the Ravens. Yep. Um, See you, Rob. Don't let what what's this what's the saying? Uh don't let the door hit you where the good lord splits you. The good you. lord split you. There that's you it. go. Get that's out it. of here, Rob. Now we look, don't want nothing to do with you. Now look, if your brother wants to come out of the booth, which I, I can I can certainly understand why Even his veneers. Yes, looking good. Um but he kills it on he kills it on get up, so I can't see him ever ever leaving. But if he were to ever want to, I think he'd find a home here in Baltimore. But for his brother, just one year and done. Um, so good luck. But but yeah, I'm excited about Zach Orr. He's he's another one of those guys. There, there's been a few of them uh, throughout this franchise's history where they just, although they weren't here long, it just felt like they were here longer than they were. Yeah, it just felt um, like they were built to be Ravens from the very jump, right? Right, and and it's also another success story in that he was an undrafted free agent, um, yep. which, you know, the Ravens certainly pride themselves on um, playing the best guy available and had a massive, uh, a very long run of at least one undrafted rookie making this team before yeah. the COVID year um, ended that streak. I think it's 17 years or something, something yeah. like that. Um, but he spent his first two seasons as a relatively unknown player, just helping mostly on special teams. But, Jimbo, the man absolutely exploded onto the scene uh, in the 2016 season when in 15 games he had 133 total tackles, Jimbo, was second team all pro and was only 24 years old at the time and was really primed to, to, to have an, a, an extremely successful career, um, whether it was you know in, in Baltimore or if he, would, if he would ultimately price himself out. The guy was really on pace to to take off, and then and then he got diagnosed with that severe neck injury um, or neck issue, I guess, and was never able to get cleared by doctors. And forced he was forced to retire at twenty five years old. Imagine yeah. being told after you have this incredible season, you break out, you finally did it, like you know you can do it now. You had one hundred thirty three tackles, your second team All Pro, and you get told at twenty five you can no longer play the game that you've been playing your whole life. Yeah, I mean, it would be absolutely devastating. I think he have, he did the best he could in recreating himself. And and it's kind of a, I mean, obviously, serious gut punch, right? But Oof. one of the competitive advantages he has as a coach is now he's in young. For right sure. now he's in for, you know, think about a 25-year-old coach, 26-year-old coach, right? Like that's a young coach. And to have the opportunity mm -hmm. to be around the locker room, to build up your brand and your recognition as a coach, I think, is the best he could have made of that situation. That's what he's continuing to do. So while absolutely it was devastating news, I also think, Glenn, to be honest with you, I think he could have got cleared by someone, but I think he was really, you know, for his own self, like, all right, I need to rethink my priorities here, and I don't want to have long-term, you know, any sort of damage and that could cause paralysis or 
or anything like that. I bet you. I mean, think about it. If, who's the kid? Not that they're the same diagnosis, but who's the kid in in Miami that Jalen? Wasn't his name Jalen Phillips? Oh yeah, with the concussion issues. Yeah. Yeah, like I feel like God, you can find someone to clear you. Um, but I think Zach. I think he tried though. I think. But I think he, he took it in stride and 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 you know did the right thing and 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 it, like like I said, he's making the absolute best of it. Mm -hmm. Um, and, and one of the things I think this is really important is exactly what you said, the story, right? The ability to say, Hey, look, I was an undrafted guy. Yep. Get out there. You know, I, I've, I've lit the path for you now. Follow me. Right. You mm -hmm. can do this just like I can, because, um, I'm, I'm in certain ways, like I'm nothing special, right? Like I was just a really hard worker. I think that's really important to show players, uh, and, and athletes alike, but certainly players that work and discipline and, and execution can go a long way. It doesn't really matter where, or even if you were drafted. So mm -hmm. that's exciting. What do you, what do you think about him in helping Patrick queen? Cause I think that this is huge. Pat is at a point in his career where half the fans, maybe more than half are already tired of him. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not really sure. I think you're at about the same situation. I'm not really sure if he's actually ever going to be interested in tackling uh, more than like throwing people down and arm tackling. Mm -hmm. uh, so how do you think Zach Orr helps a guy like Patrick Queen? Do you think that he even does, or it's really up to Pat at this point? Well, certainly some of it's up to Pat, but I, I think that what, what he does is you mentioned his youth, you know, he got into coaching at what, 25 years old, maybe 26. Um, and normally in that situation, you have to, you know, you have to earn the respect of your, of your players. And, you know, as a young guy who's you know j almost the same age, and, and I think some of the guys he'll be coaching, like Josh Bynes, if he's still with the team, will be older than him. Uh, and I, I think, you know, the fact that he's a former player gives him instant credibility. You know, it's not like, you know, Mike McDonald was a young guy when he was coaching. He's still a young guy. He's, he's only a couple months older than me. Uh, but I bet he needed to build the trust and confidence of his players a little bit more than a guy like Zach Orr, even if they're the same age, because he's – He's a former all pro. I mean, he can go in and say, yeah, look, if, if it wasn't for this, this, the fact that I have this neck issue, who knows where, you know, he would have been at this point um, in his career. Cause he'd still be playing. There's no doubt about that. Um, so I think the fact that he's going to instantly have the respect and credibility, um, especially from a guy like Pat queen, who's, who's a young guy himself. I think it at least give you, you know, it, it, and also the fact that they're closer in age. Like, what does Rob Ryan and Pat right. Queen have as far as, you know, common interests? Uh, they don't have a whole lot in common. Whereas Zach Orr, he's he's only a few years older than than Pat Queen, as young as Queen is. So I, I think there's a lot of things going in Orr's favor. Um, and, and I'm excited to see what he's – because, look, he, you said it yourself. Orr was, Orr was a tackling machine. That's what yep. that guy did. Like, he brought guys to the ground. So if he can – you know, instill any type of um, messages, work ethic, uh, film study, anything that helped him become that tackling machine that he that he is or that he was. If he can get that to instill that into Pat Queen, who obviously has more physical traits and abilities, which is why Pat Queen was a first round pick and Zach Orr was an undrafted rookie. Um, I think that you know the sky is really the limit. You just gotta you, you gotta break something that you know through in 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 Pat Queen's head that. Because he's got everything you need from a physical yeah. standpoint. It just comes down to, does he have it upstairs? And I think that, that remains to be seen. Well, hopefully what what uh, what uh, Zach Orr can do for him is give him a little bit of that. Like mentally, I think there's a big difference. I've talked about this before between an undrafted guy and a first rounder, right? And that's why I think that you know Tom Brady being a sixth rounder, what he went through as a sixth rounder is different than what a guy that's first overall goes through, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And so maybe Zach can instill some of that mentality that like sink or swim, you know, that bit of desperation, but also um, desperation urgency, maybe is the more accurate word where like, dude, you haven't arrived yet. Right. Like even if you have like mentally, you have to think that, you know, you can't get content. You can't lose the dog inside you. Mm -hmm. So just being a first round pick and having a few years in the league is nothing. There's a billion, yeah. there's, there's tons of them, not billions of them, but tons and tons of them. So hopefully he, he instills some of that in his head and gives him some urgency. Cause really, I think it's more here 
than anything else kind of like yep. uh you know you mentioned so let us know what you guys think happy to have zach or back let's clap it up for one yeah. zach or come on back, baby zach. that's right um get your paycheck help us out mm -hmm. and uh, we're looking forward to seeing what you do this season let us know what your thoughts are on zach or and we'll talk to you guys soon see you, see you.